TAs will help you take a photograph of your ethidium bromide stained gel. And as you can see here, we have a lot of bright orange bands, and those are the, the, the locations where DNA is found in your gel after electrophoresis. The ethidium bromide binds to the DNA, and in this bound form, uh, will fluoresce much more brightly than when it's just in the agarose gel, and that's why the DNA stands out above the, the background. And you get this fluorescence when you turn on the UV lamp. And open it up in preview, as I've done already here, and then take the selection tool and highlight just a portion of the gel that you want to analyze. So this is the portion corresponding with MUY10 DNA, and I'm going to use the shortcut key Command C for copy, and then Command New for creating a new file. And so now I have a, a copy of the of the that section of the gel that I can focus in on and analyze. I'll save this, save as. And it'd be a good idea to save this in in your your team file folder for future reference in case you have to come back to the image and you end up on a different computer. For right now, we're going to open up image J. So I'll click out of preview. And to find image J, go to the applications folder on the hard drive in a finder window. And you can select the science and math folder. And then the image J shortcut is over here. Select image J program. And then we'll want to open that file that we just saved onto the desktop, muty10.png. And now we can start the analysis. The first thing to do is to go to the Analyze Gels menu selection and then gen Gel Analyzer options. And in here, you want it to read uncalibrated OD on, and you want to remove the invert peaks um, option. Say OK. Beginning at the probably the middle of your well and in the middle of the lane, draw a rectangle that goes all the way from the well to the to the smallest DNA fragment, the one that's farthest away from the gel top or the, the well and then let go and then if you need to you can uh, reposition this 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 uh, rectangle get it exactly centered on your your lane and right in the middle of the well to indicate that this is the first lane to analyze use the shortcut key just I'm just going to hit the one key on my keyboard and that will highlight the lane with the number one. And now I can use the, the same rectangle, slide it over to the second lane. And for all these other lanes, I'm going to hit the number two to indicate that these are continuations of the same analysis. Just center on the lane and hit the number two key. Center on the next lane, number two key. If your rectangle slides up slightly, it should pop back, back so that all the lanes are exactly horizontally aligned with each other. Reactions. You'll hit the 3 key, the numeral 3, to indicate that you want a profile of uh, these, uh, these lanes, and you'll get this profile window. Profiles are uh, showing here the, the y-axis is the brightness or the intensity of the fluorescence stain or in other words, where the DNA bands are located, you get a peak in the pro profile plot. And this, uh, on the left-hand side, corresponds with the well location. So this is where the DNA starts. And the DNA travels to the right on the profile or into the gel. And the fastest traveling DNAs go the furthest. And these are the smallest linear DNA molecules. And the peak positions for your DNA ladder, that will give you data for construction of a calibration curves.
use this tool. It looks like a yellow square with a crosshair. Uh, this is, allows you to get feedback on or read out of the distance traveled. As the, as the cursor, as the pointer moves from left to right, the X value indicated up here in the image J toolbar is increasing in value. And you'll want to record the X value or the distance traveled for each of your DNA markers. I, I think it's easiest to record it directly on the profile plot and then later on we're going to transcribe this to a kaleidograph. So first one measured at 180, uh, sorry, the first one measured at 167, the second one is 180. This, this one here that goes, uh, is one of the brighter bands, uh, 198, uh, to get a new data sheet where the data will get entered. I'll label the first column something like uh, DNA size measured in base pairs. And the second column, I'll label mobility. And this is measured in pixels. The DNA sizes can be obtained from figure 7.5 in the protocol. So for the, re the reason for highlighting the 6,000, 3,000, and 1,000 base pair molecular weight markers is that these are, these are highlighted in our gene ruler 1KB ladder uh, photograph in red, uh, indicating that these belong to the very brightest bands on our, on our, our gel. Uh, on the real gel, that corresponds with these brighter orange bands. So I can identify 6,000, 3,000, 1,000 on the gel. And in the profile plot, they will stand out above their neighbors as uh, significantly brighter bands. So, and this, this is helpful for making sure that the, the distance is traveled or the mobilities of your DNA uh, fall into register with the actual molecular weights of the, of the standards. You should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 DNA um, uh, ladder bands. But if the gel resolution wasn't as good as it is in this case, some of these, some of these uh, closely spaced DNA molecules, some of these similarly sized DNA molecules, will appear as as a as a doublet or will merge into one peak. And in that case, it's it's helpful to to first identify which are these these the, the the brighter bands that stand out. The gallery, I'll choose the scatter plot, and I'm going to plot. The DNA size on the y-axis and mobility on the x-axis. See. Analyzing this lane over here, lane number three, we know its mobility to be 173 pixels. So I will choose the from the kaleidograph tool tool sections. I'll cho choose the pointer looks very much like the image J pointer. And then I'll slide along the red calibration curve until I get a, and if you click at the same time, you'll get X and Y values. And when the X value is 173 along the red curve, I'll stop sliding. And then I'll read out and say, read, record in my notes what is the, what is the, um, the Y value, approximately 9,000 base pairs. So copy and then paste directly into Kaleidograph. And then you can pick up these, these tabs and si resize the, the gel image so it fits neatly into, into here. And to obtain a, a screenshot of this, I go to Preview and select from the File menu, Take Screenshot from, from Window, and click on the Click on the window, and then this screenshot you can upload to upload to Canvas to complete your assignment.